Welcome everybody to 100 days and what, what was that? It's night. Uh, no, I got, yeah, I got it. Welcome everybody to 100 nights of Minecraft hardcore. In this video, I'm going to be attempting to survive 100 nights in hardcore mode. And to make sure that it's a true 100 night video, I actually had a data pack coded so that I'll be able to sleep during the day so that I will only be awake during the night. And like always, guys, I put a ton of time and effort into this video. So if you guys do enjoy it, make sure you guys smash that like button, hit subscribe, join the Paul GG army, and let's get into 100 nights of Minecraft craft hardcore night one while watching the sunset for the first time i actually managed to spot a ruined portal and a shipwreck but before i go all the way over there i was gonna need some tools to defend myself so i did what anyone else would do i quickly chopped down a tree made a crafting table crafted a sword and a pickaxe clapped a pig then got some cobblestone <gasps> made a furnace cooked up the pork chops and now it's time for me to make my way through the desert at night full of mobs and it's kind of creepy and at first i thought i could be able to get all the loot out of the portal pretty quickly but unfortunately the chest was buried underground and there was way too many mobs so i swam my way over to the shipwreck and it turned out to actually be a full-size boat which i managed to also find a diamond in it i also grabbed all the iron out of it crafted up a shield and a pickaxe and even a bucket then i looted the rest of the ship and got some food and a treasure map afterwards i gave it another attempt at the portal so i grabbed the gold block and began digging around and and there was just so many mobs they just they wouldn't leave me alone They're just being relentless tonight so unfortunately i kind of just gave up and kept wandering around until i actually found a village just in time too because i actually need a place to sleep for the day the sun's starting to rise and i'm also on my last bit of food so i'm gonna need some food too and after waking up on night two that's exactly what i did i stole some hay bales so i could be able to eat bread for the rest of my life and then i gave the village protector the clapping afterwards i pretty much just ran around the village stealing anything of value that i would need while on my adventure which actually not too far away from the village i managed to find a plains biome but honestly, it's not even really that big and I wasn't vibing with it. And I'm ah, just getting tired of planes by him. But that's when I spotted a jungle by him. Now, I've made it pretty clear in some previous videos that I, I really don't care for the jungle by him. But I am trying to survive at nighttime only. So I had this big brain idea that I could actually just live up in a tree. So I could just easily avoid all the mobs on the ground. Which luckily there was actually a tall tree on this tiny island, which is going to be perfect for living out of. So began the building process. And on days three through ten, uh, I mean nights, uh, I, uh, nights... <laughs> Nights three through ten. Time to begin the building process for our monkey treehouse. Now I've never really built a treehouse before, so in my mind, all I was hoping for is something that looks semi-decent and very livable. I wanted to try to keep to the jungle theme and mostly use jungle planks, just as the primary color for the platform. I decided to make a bold statement and use some acacia wood for all the fencing and even actually for the house. And to my surprise, actually, I think it looks pretty good. The orange with the grays and the jungle brown. I'll probably end up swapping it up a little bit later once I get stone brick. Give it a little bit more contrasting color. But honestly, I'm definitely vibing with this house. My first actual tree house. Comment down below what you guys think so far. And on 9-11, now that we got a place to live, I've used pretty much all my wood. <laughs> and it's time to go get some more. Specifically acacia wood for some future builds. But on the way over to get some acacia would i went on a sheep slapping spree and also while i was tearing down the entire forest i also found a cute little oxalotl just swimming around in a pond he's just living his best life <laughs> then i chopped down tons more trees and then i made my way back home nights 12 through 22 i started off the night by trying to cook up all the sheepers i got yesterday but unfortunately i don't really have any coal since i haven't really gone mining so now it's finally time to go on a mining adventure i punched a hole in the side of a mountain right next to the base and started digging down to y level 13. that's when i realized i actually didn't have my gamma up at all normally i always play with my gamma pretty much maxed out it makes it way nicer for everyone watching so they can actually see what's going on and it has absolutely nothing to do with the light levels so after making it all the way down to y level 13 i began vein mining until i actually found some lapis now i'm sure most of you guys know about the lapis trick by now where you go minus four on the z axis and then you start digging down you have a high chance of finding some diamonds well uh, not in this not this time <laughs> just some lava afterwards i dug straight up because i heard a bony boy rattling around up there which worked out perfectly because there was actually a lot of resources up there like coal iron and even some gold and shortly into the cave i managed to find even more lapis so after giving the trick another try and still not getting any diamonds i'm just gonna give up all right guys that's gonna be for this video hope you guys enjoy no i'm just playing <laughs> But I did find a pink oxalotl swimming around right after. So I decided to scoop him up and take him on an adventure. That is until we got shot by a skelly. But when I 
chase down the skelly, I actually found a mine shaft. And almost immediately into the mine shaft, I found a chest with some glow berries and a gapple. Then I found another chest with some bread and another gapple. At least now I'm feeling pretty safe running around here naked with just gapples. And then on my third chest, I actually found uh, basically just torches. Yeah, no, the third chest was kind of dookie. <laughs> Nothing else good in there. But almost right after, I found a cave spider, which actually means that there must be a cave spider spawner nearby. So I began digging my way all the way to the surface so I could be able to come back down later with some better gear and turn this thing into an XP farm. Afterwards, I start off the night by smelting down all the materials we got, and then I made my way down and start terraforming the island because it's time to make a farm. I know I'm gonna get pretty hungry soon and there ain't nobody out here that's gonna be feeding me. But afterwards, I began building up a shack or at least it, it started out as a shack. I just basically needed a place to store all my farming tools and all the extra seeds and trash that I'm gonna have from farming. And honestly, I don't know about you guys, but this orange stripped acacia wood's kind of working for me right now. I'm not gonna lie, something about it. Might be because of the fact that I never use it. Anyways, once I got started on the roof is when I started running into a bunch of problems. It started turning out uneven, too tall, too narrow. It just, eh, there was just too many issues with it. But I guess in the end, it kind of worked out, right? It's, it's just like a slanted roof that's kind of just hanging off. I, I, I don't know, I think it's kind of ugly. And after finishing up with the shack, I fenced in the entire farm area because I don't want to deal with any sort of mobs trampling all over my crops. And then lastly, all I had to do was hoe down all the land and plant some seeds. Well, by that, I mean just lots of potatoes because I remember I had some bone meal. So I was easily able to turn one potato into a half a field of potatoes. And then, and then, yeah, there's just one wheat seed. Anyways, now that everything is all smelted up, I decided to give the house a little bit of a remodel to give it that pop of orange. Then I decided to swap all the normal acacia logs with some stone brick to give it that tasty contrast. Honestly, I'm kind of vibing with this color scheme a lot. It might actually be one of my more favorite ones now. And on nights 30 to 35, I made my way over to the entrance to the spider spawner. But to be able to get there, I gotta go through a sketchy neighborhood. Neighborhood. Anyways, it's time to finally make that spider farm. I dug my way over to the spider spawner and started lighting up the place to make sure that no more spiders are gonna be spawning on me. Then I began cleaning out all the string. Oh my god, is that a spider? So as I was saying, started off by cleaning out all the string. And then I began the long and tedious process of mining away literally all the blocks around the spawner to give it all the to give it all the spiders room to spawn. And then of course the cave spider managed to sneak up on me and get the jump on me. I wasn't ready for that thing, but otherwise the build went pretty smooth. I cleared out a giant room and then had to set up an area where all the spiders are going to be getting stuck. Then it was time to lay out all the water and turn off all the lights. And now we got a fully functional spider farm. After finishing up the farm, it was finally time to put it to work. So I spent a good bit of time swinging away at all the spiders when I realized that I should actually decorate this thing. I don't normally put much effort into these farms to make them look good. I just kind of make them functional. But I decided this time around I might as well just decorate it. And occasionally, of course, I'd remember to chop away at the spiders to get that XP. And everything was going well until I started working on the walls. I was trying to replace it all with some stone brick to make it look good. And that's when a creeper came creeping out of a cave. He blew a giant hole into my farm and then a spider managed to jump out and poison me. Then I panicked and I placed down my oxalotl on accident and I was looking him in the eyes and he was just screaming, go on without me. But I just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't leave him behind. So I scooped him up and I went up the ladder. I ate my last piece of bread and finally I made it out of there. I didn't tell there was another creeper on the top of the ladder, but I managed to give him the one, two and I crawled my way home. <sighs> and after getting some food in me and healed up. It was time to finish decorating the farm. Like I was saying, though, I was trying to keep to the theme that I've been doing with the house with the orange and the grays, and I don't know. Like I said, I think it looks pretty good. Now this thing's looking good and it's functional. Nights 38 to 45, it's time to continue to expand our small island. The next project I wanted to do was build an area for animals. That is after I drown these drowns real quick. <laughs> Originally, this project was going to be pretty simple. All I had to do was expand the island by building out a little dirt platform for all my animals to live in. But that's when I realized this giant sand mountain's taking up a ton of room and it's going to be in the way. And if I'm going to be continuing to expand the island, it's just going to continue to be in the way. So I said screw it and started mowing down the thing. It was just so tedious to get rid of. There's tons of sandstone mixed in with the sand and then it's just I had to swap back and forth between shovel and pick. Hey, you guys know what I'm talking about. You play Minecraft. It was annoying. But after that, I filled in all the dirt for the platform for my animals and I fenced off the area where they're going to be living. And I mean, in reality, I just want some sheep and chickens, so it shouldn't be too bad. So on 
night 46 to 47 it was time to wrangle up some aminals that is after i'm done farming because it looks like the crops are done growing i already got a ton of potatoes this is why this is just the best food source in minecraft it's uncontested all i need is a golden potato so i cooked some up and made a boat and set sail luckily i remembered not too far away there was an area with a ton of animals in it the only downside is that i forgot to bring some wheat so i had to boat my first sheep on land but after getting home i grabbed some wheat for the second one which made it much smoother or so i thought because on my way to go get the second sheep i was reminded why i need to be careful playing hardcore at nighttime because there was a witch with a bunch of skeletons in between me and all the animals so i gave the first skelly the clapping then i went to go lay down the law on the witch but it had a massive brain and outsmarted me by standing in some tall grass so i missed the first and most important hit when fighting a witch and it managed to actually poison me so i quickly slayed the witch and ran away and hid in a hole so i wasn't gonna have to worry about any skellies while i'm all the way down to half a heart but after recovering from that battle it was smooth sailing from there i managed to bring home another sheep and then went back for another little chickpea and on nights 48 to 50 i've realized that i've just been doing a ton of building and not much exploring and i kind of want to go into the nether but first i wanted to play it safe by going mining and getting some diamonds so i spent the next couple of nights down in the mines saying screw it i'm just gonna vein mine it's the most efficient way to get diamonds right which actually not too far into my first vein i actually already found a cave with four diamonds in it which works out perfectly because now i could craft up a diamond pick and get me a ton of obsidian for a portal later but i wasn't gonna stop there with mining i wanted to get plenty of diamonds so i continued to mine until i found actually some lapis so i figured that i'd give the lapis trick another attempt and hope to be able to get more diamonds and nope nope yeah just no diamonds Yep, not working out for me, but I did get a little bit of gold at least. But after that is when I started getting really lucky though, because I actually found an amethyst cluster with a ton of fully grown amethyst shard things inside of it. And then shortly after that, I started finding tons of diamonds and I just continued mining until I finally had enough diamonds to be able to make a full suit of armor. So on nights 51 to 56, I started off by cooking up all my ores I mined. And then I made some new diamond gear. So now we're looking fresh. Afterwards, I realized that my chests are getting crazy full and I haven't really made any sort of storage room or anything yet. So I figured it's about time i get started on that i decided to make it a part of the treehouse by expanding <clears throat> hold on i'm gonna pause drink some water should be good to go now <laughs> i decided i wanted to make it a part of the treehouse by adding a section that drops down from my base i wanted to make the entire bottom floor out of leaves so then from the ground up it looks like it's just a part of the tree the only problem i had really was apparently i can't use ladders on leaves and i mean that that's just news to me and i know i could have used some vines but honestly i'm just getting so tired of vines they spread they cause problems and they're just so annoying now so instead i decided to put some glass since it's just see-through anyways and i can just put the ladders on top of those afterwards i began construction on the storage room it doesn't need to be crazy special or big or anything. I just need a handful of chests to be able to store all my trash. And of course, I got to stick to that gray and orange theme because I don't know. It's just something. It looks so good to me now. All in all, I think the build looks pretty decent. And it serves its purpose. And on night 57, I filled up the storage room with all the chests that I was going to need. And I started organizing all my junk. Honestly, it was just a nice, peaceful, relaxing day night peaceful relaxing night but that was short-lived because it's time to jump into the nether a night's 58 through 62 i swam towards the jungle to go make my nether portal that is until a creeper blew up and then i got jumped by some mobs when trying to shovel up dirt to fill in the hole that he made and then when i went to go build the portal again i was started getting checked out by some drowns I, just, I can't get a break here but finally i managed to get the portal set up and i jumped in no i'm just playing i forgot to get gold armor so now we're back in the overworld hold on all right now that we got some gold booties on it's time to go on an adventure ran around for a little bit mining all the gold nuggies that i could find until i actually managed to spot a bastion in a soul sand biome naturally i was gonna raid this thing for all of its gold but i actually forgot about uh piglin brutes <laughs> so i quickly ran back down clapped gas scooped up some lava slayed two more gas dumped the lava on the piglin brute <laughs> oh, running out of breath here then i looted all the chests and honestly the loot wasn't even that great anyways just got some iron and some golden apples <laughs> but then i made my way all the way down so i could be able to get all the secret gold out of this thing and i actually managed to snag six blocks then long after leaving and I, I do mean long it felt like forever i managed to finally found a fortress and since this fortress is super far away i made sure that i got anything that i was ever going to need out of this thing for now because i didn't want to have to run all the way back here i found a blaze spawner busted down some blazes for all the blaze rods that i would need then i just ran through this thing looting chest after chest after chest until i kind of had no more use for the fortress and
and just went home and on night 63 to 64 started off the night by farming up all these potatoes and harvesting the fields now that that's over with it's time to go clap some cows because i'm actually gonna need a ton of leather to be able to make some bookshelves so i can finally do some enchantment but after slaying tons of cows and it was honestly just at such a slow pace i wasn't getting that much leather i did realize that i actually could get a lot of leather from doing trades with piglins but i'm already all the way out here and i did remember that i was gonna need some sugar cane anyway so i figured i might as well keep gathering and i was also not too far away from the acacia village we were at in the beginning of this video so i figured i would stop by and see if anyone's gonna be selling any paper but i forgot that pretty much all the villager jobs just buy paper and i'm not gonna be able to get any for free so i just continued gathering tons of sugar cane i even stopped at a shipwreck because i actually remember that those always have a ton of paper in them for literally no reason and on night 65 to 66 on my way over to the nether portal i got jumped by a bunch of drowns their leader was just a kid with a triton but after giving them the hands i went over to the nether portal but like always there's a creeper lurking over here and he blew up yep oh there goes my portal and now there's a big hole and so after patching up the hole and relighting the portal it was time to jump in and on my way through to the nether i actually remember that i also needed a ton of pearls anyways to be able to get to the stronghold and so i figured the fastest way to get pearls and leather would be just head over to the bastion because i remember that there was a ton of piglins stuck in a hole so after arriving i dropped in tons of gold slayed the last piglin brood and just did tons of trades and i actually managed to get plenty of pearls and a ton of leather so we should be good and on night 67 to 71 i started off the night by chopping down some trees so that i could be able to get some wood to be able to build out an area for my enchantment room i figured that i would just make it on the ground level and make it a very open floor plan vibe you know not really an actual structure but the biggest struggle with this is the fact that i'm so indecisive when it comes to shapes and then not to mention the fact that i'm building it right next to where there's always drowns i don't know what this area is about but there's just way too many drowns here but after building it up and tearing it down and building it up and tearing it down i managed to get it all sorted out so i I crafted up all the bookshelves and I actually ended up being a bit short on the sugar cane but luckily I did plant some on the way home so that wasn't too much of a problem then I decided to build some simple walls around it that is until a creeper decided to come over and attempt to ruin my life then I just decorated it with a bunch of leaves and plopped down the enchantment table and for my first enchantments I actually managed to get unbreaking efficiency and fortune three on my pickaxe and after that I also got some protection on my pants all in all this turned out pretty good and on night 72 I figured I'd put that fortune three pickaxe pickaxe to work and go mining a bit i was hoping to be able to find some diamonds so that i could be able to make the rest of my tools out of diamond since i still got an iron sword and shovel but honestly i forgot how op fortune 3 is i managed to get a ton of lapis lazuli and a lot of coal and then eventually i did actually find some diamonds so it all worked out and on night 73 i started off by crafting up a brand new diamond sword and shovel and i made my way over to the spider spawner farm so i could spend the day just hacking slashing down some spiders so i could be able to get a ton of xp for some more enchant which is exactly Exactly what I did. I wanted to enchant my sword first, but honestly, the best thing I could get is just knockback, and I, I hate knockback. So I decided to just enchant my axe with efficiency and then my bow with power. Yeah, honestly, I can just live with it. Now that that's out of the way, it's time for some adventuring because I need some acacia wood for a future build. So I boated all the way over there to get some, but on the way, I actually spotted a giant bamboo forest. It got me thinking pandas and it's definitely worth going to check that out but first i still gotta chop down a ton of trees which is what i was attempting to do while getting mauled by tons of mobs and it's just oh my gosh nighttime is just relentless but i still managed to get plenty of wood and i set sail over to the bamboo forest and after running around for a while and being disappointed by the fact that there was no pandas <laughs> Now, I had the realization that honestly, they're probably not spawning because the fact that they don't have enough light levels, right? I think pandas need a lot of light to be able to spawn or something like that. But man, this bamboo forest is huge. It just kept going and going. Maybe one day I'll come back here and just drop down tons of torches and then maybe some pandas will spawn. And finally on night 78 to 81, since I'm actually using my mine shaft semi-regularly for once, I figured that I could actually make a build out of it, make it look cool and functional. I wanted to keep it fairly simple, but still to the normal theme of the base. So you already know I'm going with that acacia orange with that stone brick vibe. And I don't know why I struggled with the roof so much. I had to tear it down and build it up and tear it down. I don't know what the heck was wrong with me, but I just couldn't get the roof right. And after tons of trial and error, I managed to make it work. After finishing up with the construction, I decided to set up an auto smelter inside. So that whenever I come up from the mine shaft with all my ores and stuff, I could just drop them in the auto smelter and it'll do all the work for me. And now that that's out of the way on nights 82 to 89, it was finally time to craft up some ender eyes and set sail for the stronghold and naturally of course my my first eye just breaks 
gosh. Anyways, it was a pretty long and treacherous journey. I saw tons of stuff along the way. But if there's one thing I learned while out here, it's the fact that this jungle biome is never ending. I live on the very edge of it, but it just, it goes on forever. I never saw the end of it. But I did see a lot of things along the way. In fact, I actually also saw a wandering trader. For some reason, he finally decided to spawn when I'm nowhere near home and I have no emeralds. Yeah, but that's okay. He's kind of, he's kind of selling garbage anyways. So I gave him the clapping and took his two leads. And then I continued on my journey. That is until another petty drown decided to try to give me the hands. So I had to quickly just delete him off the world. And long after that, I managed to actually finally find the stronghold. The eyes were finally pulling back. So I did what pretty much any other Minecrafter would do. And that's just dig straight down, right? That's rule number one. Dig straight down. That's what we do. And shortly after popping my way into the stronghold, I actually managed to find a spider spawner. That was kind of a part of the stronghold. It was, it was strange. But I lit it up and looted the chests. And I mean, the chests honestly were kind of some dookie loot. Other than the fact that there was two discs but they were both disc 13 so that eh. and after running through this thing for a while and honestly it felt like a long time i finally managed to find a library so i quickly started tearing down a bunch of bookshelves so i could have plenty of books at home but while doing that i actually heard a silverfish spawner which meant that the portal room wasn't too far away which actually turned out to be just around the corner so it was finally time to jump into the portal so i jumped in And finally, the dragon was done for. But it wasn't over yet. I still needed to go get my elytra. So I built my way up to the end portal and hopped into the outer ends. And immediately after going through it, it spawned me on a tiny floating island. But it did also spawn me right next to an end city. But unfortunately, it didn't have an end ship. But that didn't stop me from bridging all the way over to it and raiding that thing. I climbed up the tower fighting tons of shulkers. There were so many. But fighting through them was definitely worth it. Because when I opened up the chest at the top, I managed to get 11 diamonds and a diamond pickaxe with silk touch so that also meant that i was able to get the ender chest as well then i made my way over to another treasure room and honestly that, I mean, that one wasn't really worth it it was just, just like a couple diamonds and so i set off to try to find an end ship but little did i know it was it was gonna be a while before i even see another end city i was running forever but even then the next end city that i did find didn't even have an end ship so i didn't even bother looting it this time i was so focused on just trying to find an end ship and so i just kept running and running and i was just blowing through all my food thinking about how much of a nightmare this is that i might might not even be able to get an elytra by 100 days and i'm gonna be stuck out here in the end but i did manage to find my third end city and it seemed like there wasn't even an end ship yep but as I got closer, actually, I managed to look through it and it, there was an end ship on the other side floating over the void. And even not too far away, there was another end city with an end ship. So I went from mindlessly running for thousands of blocks and not finding any end ship to all of a sudden I had two. So I quickly bridged up to the top of that thing, hopped aboard, clapped a couple shulkers and looted the chest, which I mean, the loot was all right, but I was mainly here for the elytra. So now all I was gonna need to do is find an escape. Oh, yep, there, there's one right there. So I hopped off and flew all the way over to the portal. And when I jumped in, I, I was I was at spawn. Yeah, I was at world spawn. Yep. I forgot that I used my portable bed all the time to sleep. So yeah, now, now I'm all the way at spawn, which kind of sucks because now on night 100, I'm literally just spending almost the entire night just running home. I wanted to be able to get home to build like a shrine for the ender dragon egg, but honestly, I'm not gonna have enough time. So eventually after finally making it home, I figured that I could just use the rest of the day to just get some nice tasty B-roll. And if you guys want to see some more of night only hardcore Minecraft, make sure you guys drop a like on this video to let me know and also comment down below. So honestly, I had a ton of fun with this video and I would definitely love to turn this into a series. But let me know if you guys want some more of it. Also, some of my most recent videos are popping up on the screen right now, guys. Go check them out if you guys have not already. And I will see you guys in the next one.